story of Shakti. We know that women have always shied away from investments. They've always taken the help of a male member in the family. It could be a husband, a brother, or a father as the case may be. But ever so often we come across an inspiring story of a woman who has taken charge of money and created wealth not only for herself and for her family as well. What are the hurdles of such a woman and what are the challenges and how have they overcome that? That's what we're going to see in today's episode. The story I'm going to talk to you is about Dr. Deepa. Of course, the name has changed. She's a client I met over 25 years ago. Dr. Deepa was a very successful surgeon, a physician, having a very, very successful practice. She was well regarded by her patients and her peers as well. Her clinic was always full of people waiting to meet her. To top it all, she also had a loving family. Her husband who was a professional and two school going kids completed her entire life. She was busy but a very happy lady. That's when I met her. We talked about investing. I explained that the traditional recurring deposits were think of her past and I asked her to look at new emerging trends like SIPs and sure enough she jumped at it. This I'm talking about 25 years ago. She started doing small SIPs to kind of that she was getting on a month-on-month -month basis towards creating a corpus for herself. That's how the journey started. We would sit once every quarter 90 days and I will run her through how her portfolio had performed and where we had got it right, where the markets were at any point in time, so on and so forth. I'm sure she didn't understand all of it at that point in time, but we kept this rigor and kept this schedule of meeting every 90 days and that helped gain confidence for her over a period of time in these investment products. That's how the journey started. Unfortunately, not all things were happening right for her. Her husband had uh, some kind of an illness that left him bedridden. And as a result, she soon became the sole breadwinner for her family. Well, as children were going up, there was a need for them to further pursue higher studies and so on and so forth. At that point in time, the amount of SIPs that she had done over a 10 year period had grown to about 65 lakhs. And it was a good sum for her from which she could take out some of those monies and help put her children through college and some of the overseas education that they needed to go to. But having seen that she could build a corpus of 65 lakhs over a 10 year period gave her a huge confidence. Dr. Deepa then doubled down on her investments and really increased her flow. Any bank deposit maturing, any LIC maturing, any life insurance maturities were all ploughed into mutual funds over a period of time. And therefore, over the next 10 years, her average investments in mutual funds were anywhere between 12 and 15 lakhs. In spite of some of the draws that she had to do for children's education, this was a pretty significant amount that she kept invested in mutual funds. And over a period of time, this amount, the 65 lakhs minus some drawals that she had to do, plus this SIP continuing at a much larger scale, made sure that she was left with a corpus in excess of about five crores. Yes, my friends, that's a big number. And that kind of ensured that she reached the financial independence that she so wanted to desire. Unfortunately, she lost her husband along the way, but her children are now well settled abroad. They're married, they have families of their own. And Dr. Deepa continues to consult. Not nine to five, she goes as she pleases for a couple of hours just to stay in touch with her patients, just to stay in touch with the subject. She makes a little money, but money is of least importance to her now. She has a life of her own. She goes on a yearly basis to visit her two children who are settled abroad, spend time with them, spend time with her grandchildren. And then she also does a bunch of overseas trips and local trips with her friends from college. All this has been possible 
because over the 20 years that we have been associated, she has steadfast kept her investments going. The discipline of month after month setting aside a set of money can give you a tremendous advantage in terms of the corpus one can build. Let's look at the hurdles that Dr. Deepa had to overcome. First, as they say, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Since she could not lean on anybody for financial advice, she really took it upon herself to take charge of her finances. And that's the first step to success that uh, I think she started out with. She took charge of her financial life. And that's an extremely important step. Second, I think we all love to do things that we are familiar with or like to do, but things that are slightly away from us, we'd like to avoid. Which is why many people don't consider finance to be their forte. But let me tell you, based on the experience that although finance and investing was a little far for even Dr. Deepa to start with, over a period of time, just sitting and understanding it and spending time with it became, made it more familiar for it. And over time, she could understand the patterns and make better decisions on her investments. That's the second. Third, you don't need to be expert in everything. As long as you know what you need, it's a question of getting professionals to help, which is exactly what she did. She understood that medical expertise was her forte. For everything else, she chose professionals who could help her with the journey. Fourth, she was very disciplined. And the hurdle in this case was, how do you get to do something irrespective of markets going up and down and practice having their own vagaries and so on and so forth. In spite of all that, she continued and managed to keep the flow going. The last hurdle is that, her familiarity was in the medical line. She spent most of her time there. But she did take out a little time to understand what was happening to her wealth ever so often. Asking questions, my friend, very, very important. When in doubt, ask questions and get yourself clarified. Those are the things that Dr. Deepa did and those were the way in which she handled the difficulty she had with investments and other hurdles as she overcame. Learnings for all of us from Dr. Deepa's investing journey. First, discipline to keep carrying on. If you continued your journey as she did for a 20 year period, you're sure to build a reasonably large corpus. Second, lack of knowledge did not deter her. So, the idea is when you lack knowledge, you get professionals to help you with the service. And by asking questions and getting involved in the investing process, you will eventually build on your knowledge and your conviction that is needed. Third, you don't need to start large. You can start with the amount that you're comfortable with. And as you build conviction in your investments, you can appropriately increase it as she did. Think long term. Her focus was long-term wealth for her family and that's exactly what she did. She did not let the short-term stock market volatility bother her. She kept looking at the big picture and the longer view. These are all my friends, great lessons, not only for women, but each one of us in terms of how we can imbibe the best of investing characteristics that are necessary to succeed in the long-term creation of wealth. Dr. Deepa is a fine example of an individual who came with no knowledge on investing but ended up with a huge corpus and a great success in the investing world. Here is wishing every Nari, Shakti, lady, woman who are watching this video all success on this Women's Day and wishing you great financial empowerment.